Hello, Semper Squad, and welcome back to Semper Admin, your go-to resource for mastering administrative tasks. In today's video, we will be covering how to cover the top mistakes to avoid in award recommendations. Before we dive in, let's quickly discuss why it's crucial for Marines to understand what this is and how it's utilized. Submitting an award recommendation that contains errors or weakness can display or delay the processing of the award, resulting in a downgrade or disapproval or even diminish the credibility of the recommender. By avoiding these common mistakes, they can ensure that these award recommendations are strong, compelling, and more likely to get approved. So as you can see here, we have some information that we're going to kind of go over with some examples. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is double checking the accuracy of all information in the recommendation, including the Marine's personal and service data, the details of the accomplishment, and the dates and locations of action. So this is my example summary of action. So we went in here, we have the person, we've identified the award that they're being recommended for, and then we have the period of time that they're looking at, we have the bill that they were holding and at what location. So those are just some key things here in the summary of action that we should be looking at. And this also does count for this um, citation, but we're just gonna talk specifically over this example in the summary of action because the citation's made from this. But while looking at this, you wanna make sure you're looking at those types of things. As we get into the actual like meat and potatoes of it, we're gonna start looking at the quantifiable data. What did they do? And you want to look at those to make sure they are factual. Like up here, for example, you could look at all these billets that the person was holding. You could make sure that those are correct. Big things is always making sure that the name of the individual is correct because sometimes people like to steal or acquire these awards from each other and then they just slap uh, the new name on them, which you should not be doing as they should be written basis on the accomplishments of that individual. But in the events that these happen, this is a great way to uh, cover up that kind of piece because you want to make sure if you have the wrong name that's obviously a giveaway that this was uh this award was not written for this individual but those are the types of things that you want to look at to make sure that that information is accurate and again down here at the end making sure that that's the correct person and the correct award and then i also have in here the mission capable uh because that's something that you want to make sure that in the results was actually uh true because again if you guys did not have an inspection and this was just a copy and paste or if you did have an inspection and then it was not found to be mission capable, you don't want to put that in the board because those are false uh, accomplishments. As we come down, we're going to come to the second step. Ensuring that the level of award being recommended aligns with the significance and impact of the Marine's accomplishment as described in the summary of action. So we just went over the summary of action. We made sure it was factual. Now we're going to make sure that it is actually at the level. So if you come into the second half 1650.1, under tab 12 is the Navy Marine Corps Achievement Medal, and that is the current award that this member was uh, recommended. So in here, we're gonna look at the criteria and recommendations. So the NAM is a multi-purpose decoration that may only be awarded to members of the armed forces in the pay grades of 04 and below. The award is authorized for specific achievement, such as impact award or sustained meritorious service. The performance shall be in such merit and that warrants more tangible recognition than is possible in a fitness report or performance evaluation which does not justify a Navy commendation. So this is just saying that this is actually recognition that isn't just um, when you do your JPEZ markings or if you do your fit rep, that you can't really just capture that level of accomplishment. So it is going more on up and beyond than just saying that you did really good at your job because you could be really good at your job, but you actually made some kind of impact. So that's what this is gonna talk about, the different types of um, things that we need to be looking at. So for professional achievement in the merits, um, the award must, clearly exceed in which is normally required or expected, considering the individual's greater rate, training, and experience, and be more important contributes to, uh, to the benefit of the United States or the Naval Service. So this is a key thing that we're going to look at here. So a couple things. So clearly exceeds in which is normally required or expected. So if you're not sure what that baseline is, that's where that bill description comes in. You can also go to the TNR manual if you want to know what the baseline is for that certain MOS especially if you are the officer that's originating this award and you're not sure exactly what the baseline is, I would go to the TNR standards and I would look at that uh, initial counseling you did, giving that bill description at that point. Then what you want to consider is based on the person's grade or rate, uh, training experience. So if I am a uh, admin chief and I'm holding down the shop and we you know, get by, we do the day-to-day -day grind and nothing happens, we get inspected, you know, we have a couple of discrepancies here and there, but no one gets fired. I just did my job. 
So in that position, I may not rate the Navy Marine Corps Achievement Medal because I didn't do anything more than what is required of my job. But if I am the brand new Lance Corporal that just checked in and there's no admin chief and I did the same exact action where I was able to go through an inspection, we had only a couple discrepancies and no one got fired. That definitely is something that is outside that normal rate and grade and experience that you would expect of a brand new Lance Corporal to a unit. So in that case, that person could rate a Navy Marine Corps Chief Medal, although the same end result happened. It was for two different individuals, different levels of grades and experience of what was expected of them. So that just kind of gives you an idea of what we're looking at in that piece. So when we're talking about uh, leadership achievement, so it has to be noteworthy. So it has to be something that is greater and beyond the norm, be sustained as to uh, demonstrate a high standard of development or in the specific achievement, be such merit to earn signal recognition for acts. So, and then uh, reflect most credible in the efforts of the individual towards the accomplishment of the unit's mission. So I haven't seen a lot of these awards for specific leadership for NAMS. Um, usually they're under the professional achievement piece, especially in the administrative world. But this is a type of situation you could talk about marine development. You could talk about um, usually maybe on the Victor unit side, getting uh, Marines ready for um, their unit mission, things like that. But again, these are the types of things that you need to make sure that you have an understanding of before submitting these award uh, Marines for awards. Third thing under this category is the NAM should not be awarded in recognition of any act for valor or non-combat heroism. Okay, so those ones, they have their own um, ability to be awarded under uh, tabs 13 and 14. So you're not going to just do a regular NAM without any type of device or anything just for those types of actions. So just be aware of that. And then if all of these have been met and you think that they've done more, the next higher decoration is going to be a Navy accommodation. So you can look at that piece. The next thing that we're going to look at is avoiding the use of vague, generic, um, exhaustive language in the summary and the citation. Instead, you're going to use specific examples and qualified data. Um, to sustain the recommendation. So vague language is commonly is very common, especially when speaking. We often use ad words and phrases such as kind of, sort of, and uh, that kind of thing to make sure it's less uh, factual and direct. Remember, when these awards are being written, it's all facts. Facts, direct, you're not going to add any extra fluff. You just want to put the, the fine details in there. You might have to tell a story, especially when you're talking about meritorious service models and above. But you want to make sure that you're not fluffing this thing up or using these very vague terms in there. So I kind of gave some examples. So there were about 20 people at the meeting uh, is an example of one of these very um, these words that you don't want to use. They're not very strong. They're very generic or vague. It's kind of cold in here. So it was cold in here. It was um, it was 20 degrees, you know, in the room, which resulted in being cold or something like that. You want to give the fact of the number that you're trying to give um, for about that. Sometimes we use the term over a lot, I do see. Um, remember, completed over so many, uh, which is a little bit better of a word than about. Um, over does show that one more. So you actually have given an actual number and then shown that it was bigger than that. But you always want to be as specific as possible. And those are the key words that I usually remove out of my citation, especially when I am limiting spaces as those extra fluffer words that you don't need to have. Do you see lines and giraffes and all that kind of thing uh, when you were in the South Africa, for example? So that kind of thing is that very weak word that you don't want to use. Now we use it in speaking because it was just kind of uh, generalizing, but you don't want to do that. So the member completed audits, you know, travel claims, and that's uh, that kind of thing. Well, what's that kind of thing, right? To a non-administrator, we don't know what that is. So you can say audits, travel claims, other administrative requirements, such as unit diary, if you're in the IPAC, remember did government travel charge card and DTS and uh, awards and legal, or things like that. Those are the types of things that can help strengthen those types of things. So down here, these are some good ones that you can use. You always want to have like the number of something. So there were 20 people at the meeting. So there were more than 20 people or there were over 20 people at the meeting. That shows a little bit better, um, sounds a little bit better when reading than about. It's a little bit stronger in that aspect. Uh, these are the things that I like to see is like percentage increased. So I like to have the foundation uh, where it was and then how to show that improvement as I show the increased percentage of accurate or number. Um, same thing in the reduced. So let's say 
uh, increasing. Remember, um, my platoon sergeant went through and he increased the average PFT from 240 to 263 in this last semi-annual period. So I was able to see that was an increase of whatever percent or whatever number. And then the same thing in reduced numbers. So we had uh, submitted uh, so many travel claims uh, within this time, which had actually reduced the number of DNs by this percentage. So we were having a 10% DN rate. Now we're down to a 2% uh, DN rate. And then those are just type of things that you can capture and that are strengthen that award and show that percentage. Uh, so the last thing that we're going to talk about is proofreading the entire recommendation package for grammar, spelling, and formatting errors and ensuring that it adheres to the uh, prescribed format and style guidelines. So this is what I usually use for this is I use Microsoft Word and Grammarly to ensure that the proper spelling format and punctuation of my award, uh, which is just some key things that will help you make sure that it will catch for you. You can always do a peer read if you ever wanted to, uh, but you also have those reviewers in the routing. But you usually want this award before it goes into IAPS and gets routed up to the commander for approval or recommendation. You always want to make sure that it's as good as possible because that is your name associated to this award. So you could do a peer review. If you're an officer that's originating, you have your staff and CO take a look at it. If you're a staff and CO taking, uh, taking a crack at it, usually your OIC who's going to originate it is going to have a shot at it. So don't uh, let you be the only person looking at this thing before you send it up. So a lot of good stuff. Uh, to kind of consider when looking at this. Before we wrap it up, I just want to point out a few common mistakes to avoid and tips to keep in mind while working with this. Do not submit an award recommendation that is incomplete or missing required elements, such as endorsement or supporting documentation. Be mindful in the timing of the recommendation. Ensure that this uh, submitted properly after the achievement and well in advance of any upcoming boards or departures. So those are just some timely things that you really want to be aware of. To quickly recap, today we covered the top mistakes to avoid and award rec uh, writing recommendations, from ensuring accuracy and, align um, and alignment to using specific language and proofreading for errors. Remember, by avoiding these common pitfalls, you can increase the strength and success of this award recommendation and ensure the deserving Marines receive timely and appropriate recognition. That's it for today's video. If you found this content helpful or if you learned anything, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to Semper Admin for more instructional videos on the Marine Corps Administrative Duties. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for a future topic. But until next time, stay motivated and Semper Fi.